When two waves interact, the amplitude of the resulting wave is the sum of the amplitudes of the two individual waves. This is called the principle of superposition. This phenomenon is generally described as interference, as discussed in our lessons on sound. Reinforcement occurs for constructive interference. Cancellation occurs for destructive interference. And quite commonly, there is partial cancellation. Interference patterns are a familiar sight in water. In many places, crests overlap crests of other waves. In other places, crests overlap drops. And by the way, I took this photo for the cover of the fifth edition of Conceptual Physics some time ago. Yum. Under more carefully controlled conditions, interesting patterns are produced by a pair of wave sources placed side by side, like the top view of this shallow water tank. The surface is tapped at a certain frequency in two places, producing areas of constructive and destructive interference. The pattern is different for a wider space of tappings and for different frequencies of taps. Interference is a property of all waves. In 1801, British physicist and physician Thomas Young performed his now famous interference experiments with light. This is his drawing of the pattern produced by light directed through two closely spaced pinholes. Bright spots of light formed when crests of light waves from both holes arrived in phase, that is, crest to crest and trough to trough. Dark spots formed when a crest from one wave and a trough from another arrived together. When his experiment is done with two closely spaced slits instead of pinholes, the patterns are straight line fringes. Young convincingly demonstrated the wave nature of light. Up to this time, many scientists thought that light was a succession of particles, a view that had been championed by Isaac Newton. This diagram shows how the waves superimpose to produce the fringes. The key point is the variety of path lengths from slits to the screen. Light from point O passes through slits M and N and produces an interference pattern on the screen S. The brightest fringe is at the center. Note the paths of the two slits to the center are the same length. So waves in phase at the slits will arrive in phase and reinforce each other on the screen. The dark fringes on either side of the central fringe result from one path being longer or shorter by one-half wavelength. So waves at the dark fringe arrive half a wavelength out of phase. The other sets of dark fringes occur where the paths differ by odd multiples of one-half wavelength, three-halves, five-halves, and so on. You may want to click on pause and study this diagram. In lab, you may determine the wavelength of light using measurements based on this diagram. Then you'll use the equation for the first off-center interference maximum from two or more slits, which is lambda equals d sine theta. Where lambda is the wavelength of light being diffracted, d the distance between adjacent slits, and theta is the angle between lines to the central fringe of light to the first off-center constructive interference fringe. From the diagram, sine theta is the ratio of distance y to distance big D, where y is the distance on the screen between the central fringe of light and the first constructive interference fringe on either side. Big D, when the distance between the light source and screen is much greater than indicated here, is the distance from the fringe to the slits. Interference patterns are not limited to double slits. A multitude of closely spaced slits makes up a diffraction grating. As mentioned in our previous lesson, diffraction gratings, like prisms, disperse light into its various components. Whereas a prism separates the colors of light by refraction, a diffraction grating separates colors by interference. More about this in a future lesson. If your future has to do with technology, you may use instruments that employ interference to do more than measure electromagnetic radiation. You may work with spectrometers that are the most accurate instruments known for measuring small distances. Hooray to interference in general. For now, I want to leave you with a question. 
With the spaces between fringes in an interference pattern cast by two closely spaced parallel slits be wider apart for red or for blue light? Think about that. Until next time, good energy. Mm -hmm.